Do you have a favorite? Not meant to. But mostly the unloved ones, the unvisited ones, the cases that get dusty and ignored. All the broken and shunned creatures. Someone's got to care for them. Who shall it be if not us? Yes. Welcome to Rune Soup, a weekly podcast about magic, culture, and the very best new and old ideas for living in this world. Coming to you from 43 degrees south on a small farm in deepest Tasmania. My name is Gordon, and I shall be your host. Bit of a different solo show this month. I'm not even sure if it's going to be one. I don't know how long this is going to be. (laughs) I'm basically just switching on the mic, uh, because I'm sitting with some of the ceremony work I'm doing in advance of the group journey that the premium members and I do at the beginning of each year. And and some of this material, it occurs to me, might have wider application. So maybe this is a solo show. Maybe it's a Christmas present. You're welcome. I don't know. But I say it's a Christmas present because it occurs to me I can make it weirdly seasonal. So if you have ever been a shop girl, and I was one for years, you will know the special hell that is Christmas music. And there will always be one quote-unquote carol that is more like your <laughs> your Manchurian candidate switch, right? That flips you into a blood rage and then you kind of come back to yourself in this, in this ruined shop and all these things you've destroyed, right? And for me, it is John Lennon's fuck awful, So This Is Christmas. Uh... Interestingly for James, who still works in retail, actually, um, it's Paul McCartney's Wonderful Christmas Time. So I don't know what what beef we have <laughs> with uh, with the Beatles, but there you go. But for me, so this is Christmas and what have you done? Another year over, a new one just begun. Kind of hits different in 2020, doesn't it? But I mean, firstly, uh, fuck you, John. Um, obviously, the song is... Certainly from a different time now, that that sort of the long boring of, um, I don't know, the inevitable dull triumph of a kind of like American market capitalism, right? And, and contained within it is the idea that you've let life pass you by once again. You didn't lose that weight. You're sort of middling in your career. Another year over, a new one just begun. Like, what have you done? This year, it occurs to me it it hits a little different, right? So there's another way. (laughs) You can shift the emphasis on the line. So this is Christmas, and what have you done, right? And, uh, And I guess what I mean by that is it's impossible that you've got this far into 2020 now that we are at the end of it without having said or done some really horrible things to people and things that probably don't necessarily belong with them um, but belong to and actually generate this horrific discursive field that is in fact made up of all these pings of little hurts that are just kind of like bouncing around the new sphere if you will and I say that because <clears throat> wherever you like in in the sense of increasing polarization Someone will say something that you don't agree with when it comes to masks, right? One side or the other. And and all of your discomfort and anxiety and, and whatever it happens to be about this moment gets lightning rodded into this person. And so you're not actually reacting to someone who... Uh, they don't represent... They're not causing what's happening. Do you know what I mean? And you've nevertheless said some horrible things to them. Now, this is interesting um, on, I guess, uh, on an energy medicine or or energetic basis, right? So I'm thinking about, um, I love Dr. Zach Bush. I've been sharing um, some of his videos in, in the newsroom, in the members area and so on. But he sort of said recently that fear and guilt and shame are the lowest frequencies and and you should not be participating in their perpetuation, right? 
Uh, and in, and Charles Eisenstein earlier in the year said of political hope in particular, but it's kind of germane here, that part of the process of, of being with and moving towards political hope is not contributing to the psychic field of war in any way, right? This is where he talks about telling a, telling a new story. And both of these things are, you know, um, blind men on, on the same kind of elephant, which is you are actually generating the discomfort field regardless. And and on a quasi-shamanic or at least new age shamanic basis, this is fragmentary when it uh, comes to your own energy. Uh, and it's interesting. So kind of two things come to mind. I know it's only been a few days since the um, forecast uh, episode with Austin. So this is why I'm not sure if it's a solo show or just a Christmas gift. But a couple of things that we discussed came to mind or come to mind now. Uh, and that's when I said learning to respond rather than to react. Uh, and, and the recapitulation exercise I'm going to suggest to you in a minute is a very good way of getting to a state of coherence that allows you to respond rather than to react. So to react is to say those horrible things. Um, and it doesn't mean that, you know, the challenges we face are illusory, but they are better navigated and we move towards optimism or we move forward with optimism when we are responsive rather than reactionary, right? So it's operating from a, uh, a position of optimism. And the other thing is when we discuss changing how to plan and, and iterate planning, because that's the right planning for the right conditions. So seeing clearly and again, moving forward with coherence is is an optimistic mode. So one of the things I'm going to suggest to you is here at the end of the year, uh, sit with that return to coherence um, with an exercise. It's interesting. Uh, recapitulation I first encountered. It's a real 90s thing. It's a real like 90s post-Castaneda neo-shamanism idea uh, or practice or praxis, I guess. And weird way of saying it. It's one of those things um, that is sort of in in the kind of cultures or life worlds that we bundle up into this um, word shamanism, rightly and wrongly. It's We've done shows about that, you know what I mean? But it, it's sort of sufficiently different to be its own thing. Um, and, and it's one that I find certainly value in, but also annoyance in, I don't know, like the Mandalorian. Uh, Recapitulation was sold in the 90s as like, you know, this is a Toltec shamanic technique. And it's not quite, I mean, it isn't, but there are things that you can kind of squint and 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 look like it. Uh, and, and that happens sort of across these techniques. And I wouldn't have thought that if I hadn't, if ayahuasca hadn't guided me through a process like that, not just in the jungle, but um, the times that I've been with it. There's a way of sort of being with memories that... Um, is, is very procedural and, and is, is returning to coherence. And so that's what I'm going to, that's what recapitulation is. And you can Google it and find stuff online and, and, and what have you. And, and you'll get the whole, this is an ancient shamanic technique that blah, 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 blah. And it's one of those castinated things that like, it's not quite right, but you also can't dismiss it <laughs> as being wrong. And nevertheless, uh, wherever it comes from, it, works and it works really well and and can be done with very little to no experience as uh as a well actually you can do it for years and and we'll get to that in a sec but as i said at the beginning of the episode you've said some horrible things to someone this year who came to mind or what situation came to mind um you'll know <laughs> you'll know which one it is to at least begin with and i would suggest maybe starting with that one but you can do um, I know people who've done years of, of recapitulation work, right? So it's it's a technique that you can have if you haven't heard of it before, and you can use it after an altercation in the office. You can kind of quietly go into a toilet cubicle and and, and run through a bit of it because it, it operates on the cosmology that, or on um, the notion that you will, in a, a heated or hostile exchange whether you've done something or something's been done to you a person a fragment of your energy or um, soul component or whatever you want will be bound up in that person 
or that scenario and vice versa. So you've kind of um, embedded something in you, right? And this, again, speaking of Charles Eisenstein, this is another thing he said earlier in the year, like you change your conception of yourself and you'll automatically change the world you live in. So you don't and cannot change other people. They are, and his words were, they are only messengers telling you who you are. And so with a technique like this, this is a operational technique that will allow you to be with that reality in a way that moves towards um, healing and, and coherence. And it's interesting, it relies, and this is why I've, I've come back to it, post ayahuasca and everything else. It relies on time and how you understand time, right? So, so I did that uh, swap cast with Catherine on mythic time a couple of weeks ago, uh, and the difference being, you know, how you how you understand time and what a memory is is reliant on how you understand time. Because in a linear time model, you cannot influence the past. It, it is gone and we move forward into this sort of um, predictable um, metronomic machine future. But in, in a mythic time model or a psychic uh, or um, cyclical rather time frameworks, that isn't true, right? So memories are in some sense alive. And, and that's that's been my experience in altered states of consciousness going on these healing journeys to, to previous trauma incidents in my, you know, so-called past. And it's so-called past because it is in some sense alive and that's how you experience it. So it's, it's, kind of, it's sort of funny, like, um, you almost can't do this. You almost can't have a cyclical time model unless you already think cyclical time is real. You, you sort of have to jump in with both feet, I guess, is, is one way of saying it. And actually, and this is the bit that may have triggered it, Steve Niner from the UK tweeted an Henri Corbin quote on Twitter recently, which I have open in front of me, bear with. One cannot free oneself from the past without freeing that past itself. But to free it is to give it a future again to make it significant. To deny it outright or to cling to it blindly are two contrary procedures that nevertheless arrive at the same end. And that's interesting. So to, to deny it outright um, or to cling to it blindly are both dysfunctional ways of being with memories of trauma, right? So you either stick them out of your head or you fixate <laughs> on them, right? Uh, everything remains as it was, but one transcends only by adopting what one rejects outright or what one refuses to see remains as it is, not integrated into consciousness, a source of the most formidable psychoses. So we have, and the reason I kind of um, reshared that quote that um, Steve shared, is there are quote-unquote Western frameworks that look something like recapitulation which looks something like <laughs> stuff you can find in in like uh, non-western or more specifically non-european models of time and so there is this you kind of have to realize that memories are a sort of alive before you you go in this process but i i recommend it anyway and like i said you can do it immediately after a trauma exchange uh or I think for this year, you'll know, because I, I kind of want it to be about a thing you said that you shouldn't have said, because that's everyone. Um, I'm not, <laughs> not pointing out someone specific. We we all did this this year. And not just that, um, doing so is contributing to that field of war that um, Eisenstein referred to, right? So you there's all kinds and i would actually recommend because everyone's had varying degrees of trauma over the course of their lives right it's funny i wouldn't necessarily ever recommend starting with maybe you had um sexual violence that happened to you as a kid or, or whatever right maybe I don't start with that one and it's weird the reason for it is a different ritual logic this works really well and so uh if you want to do it with dare i say a minor trauma incident and it, potentially something that you did to someone else first. Again, um, that might not be what's right for you, but potentially it is. Because it's funny, if you start with something, if you haven't done this before and you're like, okay, well, actually a really bad thing happened to me, you will get to coherence faster if you demonstrate to your own satisfaction that the technique works on something minor. Bef and then you kind of can move forward with that confidence to hit something else that needs recapitulation. So it's almost like it's a breath-based exercise. If you were to recapitulate a incidence of sexual violence from your past, um, to reclaim your energy from f like from that and to disentangle the trauma of the perpetrator or whatever from your own field, that might be a 10,000 breath exercise.
probably still is anyway. Uh, but if you've built up a, a success to your own satisfaction that this helps in a return to coherence, it might, it'll be fewer breaths. So it's almost like a snakes and ladders thing. You can either spend 10,000 to 100,000 breaths doing something or do 50 to 100 breaths on some minor traumas and then it might only be a couple of thousand um, to recapitulate that energy back. So starting on smaller, relatively minor things is not a waste of time. Uh, it's almost the opposite. It's almost, again, speaking of time, it's kind of like strategic doesn't quite cover it. It is moving forward with the awareness that time doesn't work the way we commonly describe it, I guess. And so the theory of it, or the sort of notion or cosmology of recapitulation is, is um, not very complex. Every interaction you have had with other people in your life is tied up in your personal field or energy or whatever kind of word you want for that. And each memory you have requires energy to keep it alive. Uh, and, and sort of, and especially ones that are quite emotive. So over the course of your lifetime, let's say you have 100 kilojoules of energy to kind of like run your mind. Over the course of a lifetime, you start to build up things that require that or, or take up that 100 kilojoules. So you might actually only, you, you're diminishing the total energy you have available to your system because you are keeping these things powered, right? And it's, this is what I mean. It's, you will not find, well, you won't find, you won't find a Maya elder or something that will explain it this way. And that's why it is and it isn't, uh, quote unquote, shamanic. Uh, and we did, as as members, uh, a group exercise with Kyron Almond last month, was it? Which is in the same sort of field of um, contract clearing, where that's not a thing you will find, but you will you will find things that have a similar shape to that. So you will find like this kaleidoscopic or relational self that underpins animism has things that look kind of like this if you squint at it. But what's good about these techniques is that they're sort of universally available. Uh, you can We can use terms like um, energy and field and, and, and so on and make a technique that is probably structural to human psychology uh, available without you having to kind of shift into different life worlds, right? But that's the general idea that all these encounters you've had that are that aren't recapitulated still require power to run them. Or consider it. See, I didn't want to use a spyware model because you know bad metaphors are um, curses, and that's why I kind of wanted to go with a human energy, like kilojoule calorie model. But it's it is like having other processes running in the background that interfere with the processing power of, of your particular device. And it's that's a not great metaphor. It's not to the full extent of cursing or so on. And so so this isn't a process of forgetting. It's the opposite. That's what Henri Corbin said. Like either, either approach to a trauma incident or a memory is dysfunctional, either sitting with it and fixating on it uh, or saying that simply did not happen. <laughs> Uh, this is a technique that allows you to reclaim that energy back so you can sort of move those kilojoules back into the total pool that are available to you. And again, uh, if this is if you're vibing on this, um, you will absolutely find all manner of um, variants of the technique uh, on some sort of very purple websites because uh, it is a couple of decades old at least uh, in, in terms of the last time it was, uh, I guess, centered. So that's the idea. You're, you're, um, you're returning energy that belongs to you from a situation that it no longer serves in and also giving back the energy or um, imprint of the other person or other situation that you're carrying around with you. And that's why it, any of those negative interactions damage the field, right? And, and, and they continue to damage you uh, until you take that sort of power um, back. And it's kind of common in this process that you will, uh, you'll recover. It's, uh, this is, I'm trying to do this show without saying soul retrieval because that's another good example of a thing that doesn't actually exist anywhere, but also doesn't not exist anywhere in, in the cultures that went into, in a problematic but not entirely wrong way of, of forming the sort of 20th century conception of, shamanism it's it 
again, you kind of struggle with these uh, these techniques have an efficacy that looks like things elsewhere, but there is a way of encountering that that's non-extractive, uh, and it's and it's I think it's to bring awareness and trouble to to where it comes from to start with because if it's structurally true, it's structurally true, right? So you'll find if you do this process that you won't just recover the energy and coherence, which is the most important thing, but uh, some of the things that can deaden around you in uh, following a trauma incident can kind of come back to life, right? I know I'm, I'm, it's, it's a fairly simple technique, but if you actually just do it, um, yeah, call me in the morning, put it that way. So this is, this is, it's very simple. Uh, and I have a slight modification. <laughs> it's very simple. So begin however you want to begin this stuff. Again, it depends on if you're doing it in a in a cubicle at work after a heated exchange, you're probably not going to be in the situation of having, because that's a weird temple if that's the case, having like your full spirit room accoutrement around you. But begin how you would, sort of a grounding and, and directional calling in or, or however you want to do um, the creation or the uh, initiation of ceremony, right? And if you don't have one, you honestly can do grounding in the sense of sort of visualizing your feet extending roots into the earth kind of stuff anything like that now the process is a sort of um, movement of head and breathing one so once you're grounded imagine the or bring to awareness is a better word because uh, you'll have to actually read the next book to get the, the fully jail broken sense of imagine and imaginal but bring to your awareness the person that you are still entangled with or the experience um, that requires recapitulation. And like I said, if we're going to do one on kind of improving the or not contributing to the field of war, you will have said something to someone or about someone that doesn't sit right with you um, this year. And, and may I suggest for the, uh, for the overall improvement of the world and your own um, psychic and energetic health that you can use that one as your example. Now, bring that to your awareness, and and commonly this is this is a slight modification, but I think it's quite powerful. Um, on the in breath, you are pulling your um, energy back from that person or situation, and on the out breath, you are expelling either that energy or imprint that has remained with you from that situation. Now, on, online, you will find the in breath. Um, is the one you start with. And I actually find that causes this, particularly if the the um, scenario is one that's still uh, a little bit sore. I actually find that the anxiety of, of pulling in from that situation as the first act is a bit much. Um, so I actually, so what you do instead is with sort of full lungs, move your head to the right and Begin with an out. Begin with an expulsion because it's almost a banishing. So rather than pulling from the trauma situation or um, unfortunate exchange, start with the outward expression of something that's in you. And what you do on the out breath is you move your head from the right slowly all the way to the left as you breathe out, and that's the breathing out of the imprint or the field or so on. And then on the in breath, you of course move with your head from the left to the right, and you draw your energy back from the situation. Now, on a minor thing, there isn't, as with any of these things, right, there isn't a certain amount of um, breaths in and out that you do, and then you can say, oh, I'm done. But for maybe something you shouldn't have said to or about someone online, see what happens with um, the 10. So you do the inhaling as you move your head to the right, and exhaling as you move your head to the left, um, all while visualizing separating your energy. And, and that can actually look like disentangling. Um, it, it might not. Uh, and where that energy that you bring back lands in you, um, you can find yourself. One of the, well, a couple of the examples you will see online is that you, you experience the returning energy as like a ball just above your head. And when you are satisfied um, that, the disentanglement or recapitulation well the disentanglement part of the recapitulation has completed then you kind of stop moving your head left to right and you kind of breathe that energy um, down through your own head and you also do the same thing if it's a person 
you can visualize the energy that they have tangled up in you above their head and and have that um, drop down it can also be a scenario or, or whatever and again it's kind of why you want to start with like i shouldn't have said that about blah 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 <laughs> online rather than this person uh perpetuated violence to me as a child um, let's start with <laughs> let's start with things you shouldn't have said online and particularly ones that you did because uh it's a good step in 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 kind of like moving to moving forward with coherence the sort of way um where this came from is sort of sitting with what austin and i said and, and getting ready for the group journey at the end of the year right so that's the process honestly you um you expel out the imprint or energy that the other person has with you you breathe yours in start with 10 uh, if you need to go forward do more but like 10 is 10 is a good kind of cubicle amount right so if you have had that exchange and you're like i don't want to spend the rest of the day or even the rest of my life carrying around this uh fragmenting off of energy with either my boss or a co-worker you can go in there and you're doing the right thing for you and it and yeah that's recapitulation and here we are at the end of 2020 probably um you know so this is christmas and what have you done will come up uh at some stage <laughs> for the next few days thinking of how you behaved what you're going to do next and maybe this will help uh, maybe it won't i hope it does and yeah a bit of a strange solo show it's just a you may want to look at recapitulation uh and and give it a shot let me know how it goes and and have a very very good christmas make the yuletide gay as fuck until next time. Bye.